Hi, I'm Tosh Lubeck from DIYvideostudio.com. In this video, I'll explain what umbrella lights are, why you should use them, and how to use umbrella lights in video the correct way. Many beginners try umbrella lights as their first proper video lighting setup. Unfortunately, many people fail to use them properly, so they move on thinking more expensive gear will make them look good on video. The truth is that umbrella lights will do a great job if used correctly. We often get umbrella lights as our first video lights because they're cheap. But there's another advantage of umbrella lights being inexpensive. It means we can easily buy different types and sizes of umbrella to experiment with and to learn. And the bonus is that if they do get damaged, it's not going to be the end of the world. When using umbrella lighting, it's quick and easy to set up and take down. You can open them up like regular umbrellas. Slide the lamp holder onto the umbrella shaft. Secure it in place with the thumb screw. Screw in your bulb and you're done. Of course, umbrella lights aren't perfect. Their main drawback is the lack of control over where the light falls. Light spills in every direction with the white umbrellas, less so with the reflective silver and black type. So why use an umbrella light instead of an ordinary bulb? Well, a bare bulb produces hard or harsh shadows, a bit like direct sunlight. But the umbrella's white canopy diffuses the light, producing soft light that seems to wrap around the subject. It's a more attractive type of lighting that smooths shadows and can help reduce the appearance of wrinkles and blemishes. The trouble is, many people don't understand how to use umbrella lights properly. Often when training clients, I've noticed they've fitted the bulb in the wrong way. Often, it's not their fault because frequently these lighting kits don't come with instructions. The first thing you should know is that whether you're using a white shoot-through umbrella or a black and silver reflective umbrella, the bulb always points in towards the canopy. The aim is to make the small bulb appear to be a large light by illuminating the umbrella canopy. That's what produces the diffuse light that we want. Because the white shoot-through umbrella creates soft light by passing the bulb's light through the canopy, it's the top of the umbrella that's pointed at the subject, because the whole of the top of the umbrella is now the light. But with reflective umbrellas, the silver underside of the canopy bounces soft light back in the direction of the umbrella shaft. So black and silver umbrellas point in the opposite direction to white shoot-through umbrellas. Umbrellas are an example of what we call a light modifier. They can change a small light source like a light bulb into a large light source of soft light. And with soft lights, relative size matters. So a small 33 inch umbrella that's close to the subject, in relative terms, can appear to be as large as a 60 inch umbrella that's further away. But whatever size your umbrella, the closer it is to your subject, the better, because you'll get the softest shadows possible. And by close, I mean just a few feet away at most. So the distance of the umbrella from your subject will influence how soft the light appears. But there's another way to adjust the softness of the light. You can move the bulb along the umbrella shaft. If you're using a white shoot-through umbrella, if the bulb is close to the canopy, the bulb's light is concentrated on a smaller area of the diffusion material. Instead of the whole umbrella canopy being the light source, most of the light comes from a much smaller area of the canopy at the middle. To get the softest light, move the bulb back so the canopy is evenly illuminated. You can see the effect of changing the bulb position on a shoot-through umbrella with these two sample shots. The image on the left had the bulb close to the umbrella canopy, so the shadows are harsher with more contrast. The image on the right had the umbrella bulb further back so the canopy was evenly illuminated. As a result, the shadows are much softer. With the reflector umbrella, things are a little different. The biggest effect of changing the bulb position 
is on the brightness of the umbrella light. You'll hit a point along the umbrella shaft where the maximum amount of light will be reflected towards your subject. So, before you start filming, always make sure the bulb is in the ideal position on the umbrella shaft. Now you know how to prepare the two types of umbrellas, let's look at using them. Normally, I'd be the subject in my YouTube videos, but today I'm going to be using William Shakespeare, or a bust of him, as my subject. That's to keep everything consistent, shot to shot. The first setup is the one most people start off using for videos and for video conferencing. You can use either the white umbrella or the reflective umbrella, it doesn't matter. In this example, I use the shoot through umbrella, and it's behind the camera, a little higher than my subject's head, and pointing down at him. In effect, the light is almost face on to the subject. This setup is simple, it takes up very little space, and it just works, although you will have to decide whether it produces the look that you want. I think the look is a bit one dimensional, it's a bit flat, and because the light is behind the camera, Unless you're using a wide-angle lens, you're losing some of the softness that umbrella light can produce, because the light's too far away from the subject. You could use a larger umbrella, of course, and that's what I do when I'm using this setup. A standard umbrella is 33 inches across. I swap that out for a 60-inch umbrella. It's not that much more expensive, and with the larger umbrella, you can get those shadows looking a little softer. Of course, being a larger umbrella requires more light, so I replace the single bulb holder with one that takes four bulbs. However, you may encounter a problem with this face-on setup if you wear glasses, like I do for reading. It's a problem that's easy to solve, though. Just raise the light up until the reflected glare from the light disappears. The other solution is to use setup number two. This one gives you more definition to the subject's features, while still taking advantage of the lovely soft light that the umbrella produces. Again, you can choose either a shoot-through umbrella or a reflective umbrella, although the reflective umbrella does produce a more dramatic look that's probably better for portrait photography. With this setup, start off with the light next to the camera and move the light away from the camera as if you're swinging it out by about 45 degrees, and then raise the light above your subject's head height and point it down towards them. If your subject is speaking directly to the camera, it doesn't matter whether you put the umbrella light off to the right or the left of the camera. If you're recording an interview, the setup is a bit different, but that's for another video. If you want to make the setup look a bit more impressive, you can add a hair light that illuminates the edge of the hair and the shoulders by placing a small light behind and above the subject, pointing down at the back of their head and onto their shoulders. If you have a light stand with a boom arm, you can have the hair light directly behind the subject, so it illuminates the tops of both shoulders and around the head. But it's perfectly fine to put the hair light onto a light stand and off to one side as I've done in this example. You can see the hair light helps to separate the subject from the background. Now, if you want to take your lighting even further, you can add another umbrella light on the other side of the camera to create a two or three point lighting setup. Your first umbrella light would be your main light, known as a key light, and the second umbrella helps to fill in the shadows, so it's called a fill light. You'll need to make the fill light about half as bright as the key light. You can do that by choosing different powers of bulbs in your two lights. If you're using CFL bulbs, you could have a 105 watt CFL for your key light and a 45 watt CFL for your fill light. Alternatively, you could move the fill light further away or add some extra diffusion material in front of the umbrella canopy. Another trick you can use is to close the canopy on the fill light. The umbrella's effective surface area decreases, and the diffusion material will probably overlap, increasing the effective thickness of the material. Both things will make the umbrella look dimmer. And as before, you can include a hair light to complete the three-point lighting setup. 
One final point I'd like to make is that most umbrella kits come with CFL bulbs. Now, they do work fine, but they have been superseded by LED bulbs. LEDs are more efficient, they don't get as hot, they're not as fragile, and you don't have to wait until they've got to their normal operating brightness before you can start filming. And importantly, they don't contain any mercury, which is toxic. When you get the chance, swap your CFL bulbs for LEDs. These days, even household LED bulbs are good enough for video lighting. The ones I'm using right now are Lohas 23 watt LED bulbs. They're daylight white or a color temperature of around 5000 Kelvin. They put out 2500 lumens of light, so they're equivalent to at least a 150 watt incandescent bulb. I've got a single LED bulb on a 33 inch umbrella as my fill light just over there and four bulbs on a 60 inch umbrella as my key light over there. If you're interested in getting some, I'll include a link to them on Amazon in the description. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Remember to ring the notification bell so you'll hear when I upload more videos just like this one. Until then, you can visit DIYVideoStudio.com for more of my video related content. Bye for now.